Hello friends, welcome back to csr.net online training video series. Today we are going to discuss method overriding in csr with examples. Method overriding is one of the mechanism to achieve polymorphism. Actually, it is the mechanism to achieve dynamic or runtime polymorphism in csr. So what we are going to discuss in today's video. Today we are going to discuss the following nine pointers. First, we will discuss what is method overriding. Then we will discuss when we need to go for uh, overriding, right? Then we will discuss when is a subclass method is treated as an overriding method, right? Then we will discuss how we can override a parent class method under the child class. Then we will discuss multiple examples to understand this method overriding concept. Then we will discuss. Uh, then we will discuss if we are declaring the parent class method as virtual. Then is it mandatory to override that method in the child class or not? Right, that concept we will discuss. Then we will discuss how we can execute the superclass method if it is overridden in the subclass. That means if you are overriding the parent class method under the child class, right? Then using child class instance, if you call the method, then always that method is going to be executed from the child class. Then if you want to execute the superclass method, right? Then how you can execute it? That is the concept that we are also going to discuss. Then we will discuss one real time example, right? So that you can understand the overriding concept in detail, right? In if you are going to develop any kind of a real time application, then whether you should implement that method overriding concept in your project or not, you will get idea, right? And finally, we will discuss the difference between method overloading and method overriding because in most of the interview the interviewer asking this question so we will also discuss that as part of the uh, as part of this video right but before uh, going further uh, i just need to tell you one thing if i am using the term function overriding or if i am using the term method overriding don't confuse both are having the same meaning and using this method overriding concept we can implement uh, polymorphism right uh, or you can say we can implement a dynamic or runtime polymorphism in Shisha. With this, keep in mind, let us proceed and understand what all we have mentioned here one by one. The first question is what is method overriding, right? So the process of re-implementing the super class, non-static, non-private, and non-shield method. If the in the super class, in the parent class, if you declared any non-static, and if that method is not private, and if that method is not uh, non sealed right if that method is not sealed and if you are re-implementing the same method with the same signature in the child class then this is said to be method overriding same signature means what the same signature means the name of the parent class method will be same in the child class along with the parameter right whatever parameter that method taking in the parent class the same type number and order of the parameter should be there inside the child class and when the signature is same, right, then we can say only this is method overriding, right? Then the next question, we understand this concept of what is method overriding, right? Then when we need to override a method, right? If the super class or you can say if the parent class method logic is not fulfilling the subclass or child class business requirement, then the subclass or child class needs to override the super class method with the required business logic. Usually in most real-time applications, the parent class methods are implemented with generic logic, which is common for all next level subclasses. See, if you are defining one parent class, right? That, that means you, that parent class is going to be consumed by multiple subclasses, right? And in the parent class, uh, if you have defined one method, right? Then that method logic is going to be common for all the next level subclasses. But think the scenario where one of the subclasses does not want that logic, right? Whatever logic you implemented, that is common for subclasses. But one of the subclasses doesn't like that logic. He want to implement that method or he want to implement the logic in a different manner. That means whatever logic you written in the parent class method is not fulfilling the ch child class requirement. Then in that scenario only, the child class going to re-implement the parent class, non-static, non-private, and non-abstract method under the child class. Scenario like this, we need to go for method overriding, right? When is a subclass method uh, treated as an overriding method, right? We already discussed. If the method in the subclass or child class contains the same signature 
are the super class non private non static non shield method then the sub class method is treated as overriding method and the super class method is treated as overridden method so what it means now first of all you have defined the method in the parent class suppose the parent class method name is method 1 and if the parent class method taking two integer parameters then in the child class you need to redefine the method with the same name method 1 again with the same parameter that is two parameter then only we can say that the subclass method is a overriding method and the superclass method is going to be the overridden method. That is fine, right? We have understood this concept. But the important thing is how we can override a method under the child class. Or we can say how method overriding is implemented in the child uh, in the C sharp programming language. Right? See, if you want to override the parent class method under the child classes, first of all, you need to declare the parent class method by using the virtual keyword, right? Once you make the parent class method as virtual, then only the parent class giving permission to the child classes to override the method, right? If you are not declaring the method as virtual means you are not giving permission to the child classes. It is mandatory if you want to implement method overriding, it is mandatory to declare the parent class method as virtual by using the virtual keyword, right? Declaring the method as virtual, making the method as overridable means once you declare the method as virtual, then that method can be overridable in the child classes. Now, now if the child class wants to override the parent class virtual method, then the child class can override it by using the override modifier. But but the point that you need to remember is overriding the parent class virtual method under the child class is optional. It is not mandatory. If the child class want, then he can override the method. If he doesn't want, then he cannot over. He, if he doesn't want, then no need to override the method, right? But he, if he wants to override the method, then for overriding, he needs to use the override modifier, right? For better understanding, look at this uh, logic or look at this code. So here, class one. Class 1 means this is the parent class. Class 2 is inherited from class 1. Class 3 is also inherited from class 1. That means class 1 is the parent class for class 2 as well as for class 3, right? And inside the parent class, how to declare a virtual method means you need to use the virtual keyword. Once you mark the method with virtual keyword, then it will become a virtual method and virtual method means it is overridable method. And once this method become a virtual method, now class one give permission to class two and class three. Hey, Mr. Class one, uh, sorry, hey, Mr. Class two, hey, Mr. Class three. If you want, then you can override this method. If the logic, what I have written inside this method, is not fulfilling your business requirement, then you can override this method. But if you want to override, then you have to use the override modifier, right? Now, now class two comes, now class two say, yes, the logic is implemented inside the parent class method, right? But that logic is not fulfilling my business requirement, right? Not fulfilling my business requirement, no worry. The parent already giving the permission. So you can override the method, right? You can override the method means you are going to re-implement the parent class method under the child classes. And how you are going to re-implement means by using the override modifier, right? So this implementation is given there and you are re-implementing the business logic by using the override modifier. Once you re-implement the logic, then this method is going to be said as overridable method and this is overridden method, right? Now, Class 3 sees the business logic provided by class 1 and class 3 is happy. Happy means he sees that whatever logic you are implementing and that is fulfilling my business requirement. I'm not going to provide implementation. I'm not going to provide a re-implementation for this show method. See, class 3 doesn't implement, uh, doesn't re-implement the show method. So the point that you need to remember is making a method as virtual means it is optional for the child classes to override. If you want, you can override. If you don't want, you don't need to override the virtual method. This is how you can implement virtual method and how you can override that virtual method under the child classes, right? See, uh, if, uh, if you want to understand this with real-time example, then uh, you can understand, suppose, understand it very easily. How? Suppose, suppose on your birthday, uh, your parents give you a mobile phone. Then your parents tell you, if you like this mobile phone, it's okay. You can use it. And if you don't like it, then take the bill and go to the mobile shop and exchange it. So if you want, exchange it. And if you uh, 
like it, then you can use it. Now, now you have two options. What are the options? First option, whatever your parent gives you, you just use it. Second option, if you don't like the mobile phone, go to the uh, mobile shop and exchange it. And whatever you like, you take it, right? So, so this is exactly same as method overriding. You have one method in the parent class, right? If you have one method in the parent class, if you like that method, you can consume the method. Parent class method means it is uh, giving you for consumption, right? If you like it, you consume it. If you don't like it, then re-implement it. This is nothing but your method overwriting, right? Now, now let us understand this method overwriting with one example, right? Already what we discussed, I'm copy pasting the code. So you can see, right? So whatever, uh, this is my class one. And in this class, I'm declaring one method called so with the keyword virtual. Virtual means now class one giving permission to class two, a eh, class two. If you don't like the business logic, what I have implemented inside the so method, you can re uh, you can override. And if you want to override, you need to use the override uh, modifier. Now, now you can see this is class two. Class two doesn't like this logic, what implemented by the parent class. So he is overriding the method. So overriding means by using the override. And the most important point that you need to remember is the method signature should be same. The name of the method, same. The number of a parameter the method is taking going to be same. In this case, they are not taking any parameter. But uh, if the method is taking some parameter, then the same parameter should be here. Now, child implement this method, right? Now. Now, the important thing that we need to understand the main method, right? So, if you look at the main method, what we are doing, we are creating one instance of class 2, but storing that instance in the parent class reference variable. So, as per our inheritance, one of the rules is that a parent class reference variable can hold the child class object reference, right? So, in this case, the child class is class 2. So you can store that child class instance under a parent class reference variable, right? And then you can call the method. So this so method is defined inside the parent class and the same so method is also redefined inside the child class. Now, in the next statement, what we are doing, we are creating an instance of a child class and we are storing that instance inside this child class. And then we are just invoking the so method. Right now, if you run this application, then you will observe that in both the scenario, the show method is going to be executed from the child class only. Right? Let me run the application and show you the output. Yeah, you can observe the output. Both the child class method, both the in both the scenarios, in, in this case as well as in this case, the child class show method is going to be invoked. Why? Why in both the cases, the child class show method is going to be invoked that we need to understand. While working with the polymorphism, we need to understand two things. What are the things? What happens at the time of compilation and what happens at the time of execution for a method call? Is the method going to be executed from the same class at runtime, which is bounded to the class at the compilation time? Or is the method going to be executed from a different class at runtime rather than the class bounded at compile day. That is what we need to understand what it means. Now see, in this case, we need to understand what happening at the time of compilation and what happening at the time of a program execution. So to understand this, we need to understand two things, right? So this is our code. We need to understand two things. Okay, let us first under, understand this statement. This class one OPJ equals to new class two. So in this case, what is the type of this reference variable obj1? obj1 reference variable type is class 1. And what is the object type this reference variable pointing to means the object type is going to be class 2. Yeah, right? So the point that you need to remember, the reference variable type is class 1. And this reference variable pointing to the object which is of type class 2. Right? Now, now we need to understand this statement obj show. See, in obj show, we need to understand what is obj, obj reference variable type is class 1. obj1 pointing to which object? Class 2. Then compiler, compiler always, so in this case, the compiler always trying to check the show method, right? So compiler is trying to check the show method 
from the reference type only. So what is the type of this reference variable class one? So compiler will go to the class one and it will try to figure out, is there any method available with the name show? If available, then the compilation is successful, right? But at wrong time, wrong time, CLR is not going to check what is the type of this variable. What CLR will check? What is the object this variable pointing to? In this case, it is pointing to class two. So at wrong time, the CLR is going to execute this method from class two. So it will come to class two and it will try to figure out is there any method available in class two with the name so which doesn't take any parameter? Yes, available. Please execute this. So that means what? Now in this case, the compiler bounded the method call with method definition in class one, but at runtime, that method is not executing from class one, but executing from class two. That means at compilation time, we cannot identify that this method is going to be executed from each class because the implementation is there in class one and implementation is there also in class two. As we have two implementation, so at the time of compilation, we cannot figure out from which class this method is going to be executed. This is going to be resolved at runtime. Runtime only the CLR will decide from which class this method is going to be executed. As this thing is decided at runtime, so we can say that this is nothing but runtime polymorphism. I hope you understand this concept. Now, now coming to these two statement here, the compiler will check uh, here the object is of class two and the variable is also of class two, right? And in this case, the compiler will check what is the type of this variable. This variable type is class two. So compiler will go to class two and we'll see is there any show method? Yes, show method is available. Compilation successful. And at runtime, CLR will decide check. Uh, so CLR will check the object. The object type is class two. So it will go to uh, class two and try to execute the method. Yes, this method is executed. So in this case, we are achieving runtime polymorphism. But in this case, we are achieving compile time polymorphism. Why? Because what the compiler decided, compiler decided that this method should be going to execute at runtime from class two. And at runtime, that method is going to be executed from class two only. So this is nothing but compile time polymorphism. But in this case, the compiler think that the method is going to be executed from so uh, class one, but runtime this method is going to be executed from class two. That means from a different class. This is nothing but your dynamic or runtime polymorphism. That's what you need to understand, right? So this is static polymorphism. So, so in this case, this is your static polymorphism and this is your dynamic polymorphism, right? Now, overriding the virtual method is optional, right? The point that you need to keep in mind is overriding the virtual method in the child classes is optional. What it means, if you want, you can override the method. And if you don't want, don't override, who is forcing you to override? This method is declared as virtual in the parent class, means already one implementation is there. It is not an abstract method, so that you, it is mandatory to provide implementation. The implementation is already there in the parent class. If you want, you can override. If you don't want, don't override this. Okay, now let us understand this with one example also, right? So what I'm trying to do is, I'm just copy pasting the code and you can see that this is class one, right? This class three is derived from this class one. I made this class three now become a child of a class one. Class one giving permission to class three, a class three. If you want, you can override this method. But class three saying that I'm happy with your implementation. Whatever implementation you are providing that is fulfilling my business requirement. I don't want to override. Then class one saying, if you don't want, then don't override, right? Because the implementation is already there. In this case, this is not an abstract method. Abstract method means method with without implementation. This is a virtual method, right? Virtual method means method with implementation. Whenever we have implementation, it is not mandatory for the child class to provide implementation, right? In this case, what will happen? Now, it is not mandatory. And in this case, if you are creating an object of class three, then what will happen? So in this case, the compiler will check what is the type of this variable, class three. 
right? So it will go to class three and it will figure out is there any method available in the class three with the name show. So it will come to class three and it will see that no, no, the show method is not available inside class three. Then it will go to its parent class. Who is the parent class? Class one. And yes, in class one, the show method is available. So compilation successful. At runtime, what will happen? At runtime, the pro, uh, CLR will check what is the object this OBJ3 pointing to. It is pointing to class three. Okay, let's go to class three and execute this method. It will come to class three and it will see that this method is not available here. Then it will go to the class one. Yes, in class one, this method implementation is there. So it will go to execute the method from class three. So in this case, compiler will check, compiler bind the method call with method definition in class one and at runtime that definition is going to be executed, right? This is compile time polymorphism. In this case, overriding concept is not there. And in this case, right, in this case, class one, OBJ4 is nothing but your parent class, parent class referencing to the child class object. In this case, show method, show method means compiler will check what is the type of this variable class one. So it will go to class one and find the method call with method definition, compilation successful. At runtime, CLR will come into the picture. CLR will check what is the object this variable pointing to class three. So it will go to class three and trying to execute the method. Right? Is that method available in class three? No, it is not available. So it will go to the super class. So in super class, method definition is available. Yes, available. Please execute this. That means this is uh, how the method execution takes place. This is how we need to think what happening at the time of program compilation and what happening at the time of program execution, right? So this is the thing that we need to understand, right? Now, now one of the important question, how can you execute the superclass method if it is overridden in the subclass, right? Once we re-implement the parent class method under the child class, then object of the child class call its one method, but not its parent class method. But if you want to still consume or call the parent class method from the child class, then it can be done in two ways. What are the ways? Now, by creating the parent class object under the child class, we can call the parent class method from the child class or by using the base keyword, we can also call the parent class method from the child class. Let us see both of the approaches, right? So in this case, I'm using the base keyword, right? Now, now if you look at the code, so this is my show method, right? This is my show method and this show method is overriding in the child class. Now. Now, in this case, if you are creating an instance of child class, right, whether you store that uh, instance in the same class or in the parent class, always the show method is going to be invoked the child class show method, right? In this case, never this method is going to be executed from the parent class until and unless you create an instance of a class one. But I am not, but we are not creating an instance of class one. We are creating an instance of class two, but by using the class two instance only, how we can execute this method, that is what we need to understand. We have two options. What are the options? Now, from the child class method, using the base keyword, we can call this parent class method. So base dot show means it will call the parent class show method, right? So before executing this statement, you will see that first it will execute to the parent class method. Once the parent class method execution complete, then it will call execute this statement, right? So now, now let's uh, run the application and see the output. So using the base keyword, you can consume the you know, parent class method under the child class method. This is one of the mechanism. You can see before executing the child class body, it is executing the parent class method, right? This is one of the way to implement, uh, uh, one of the way to call the parent class method under the child class. And what is the second option? The second option is create an instance of the uh, parent class Suppose I'm creating parent class instance and I'm just calling the, that instance, right? Parent class instance and using that instance, I can call the show. So this is another option. So by using the base keyword, we can call or by using the child class instance, we can also call the parent class method from the child class, right? So this is how you can call or you can consume the parent class overridden method under the child class overriding, overriding method, right? No. Now, now let us understand one real-time example of a method overriding, right? So understanding the concept is fine, but if you are not understanding how to use this concept in real-time application, then it doesn't 
matter right it doesn't make any sense we know everything but we cannot use those things then what is the use of knowing those things if you are not utilizing those such, such concept or such things in your application so we need to understand some real kind of application so that we'll get more clarity at what scenario at what situations we need to use method overriding right suppose we need to develop one application for one organization to calculate the bonus and we need to calculate the bonus based on the designation of the employees or we can also give a fixed bonus the management team has decided to give 50000 as a fixed bonus or based on the salary they may get 20 to 25 percent as bonus whichever is higher suppose its annual salary is some 10 lakhs right and we need to calculate 20 percent and then after calculating 20 percent we need to check whether 50,000 is higher or the 20 percent of the annual salary is higher whichever is higher give that as a bonus to the employee right so currently here we are taking example of three different designations but you can take as many as a designation you want so what i'm trying to do is if the designer if the designation is a developer if the employee is a developer then the employee may get either a 50,000 as a fixed bonus or 20 percent of the annual salary as a bonus, whichever is higher. If 50,000 is higher, then give them 50,000. If 20% is of the annual salary is higher than 50%, then what is that 20% uh, of the annual salary that give as a bonus? And in the case of a manager, what we are trying to do is, we can give 50% as a fixed bonus, or what we can do is we can give 25% of the annual salary as a bonus, whichever is higher. And if the designation is admin, then the employee will get a fixed fixed 50,000 as a bonus. There is no such calculation we need to perform, right? So this is our business requirement. Now let us see how we can implement this in our application, right? So let me copy the code, paste it here. Okay, see. So this is my employee class and inside this employee class, I'm declaring some properties. I did name designation and salary. Right, and these properties are applicable to all the type of employees. So I put all the, these properties inside my parent class, right? And inside this parent class, I have one method. I declare this method as a virtual method, and this method is basically going to calculate the bonus. So the common logic, the common business logic, I have implemented, and whenever I call this method, it is going to return fifty thousand as a fixed bonus. The fixed bonus implementation logic I have implemented here. Now, now coming to the developer class. So this class is implemented, uh, inherited from the employee class. Inherited from the employee class means all these four properties are available. As well as if you want, you can calculate, you can override this uh, calculate bonus. Right, first of all, check, is the parent class business logic fulfill your requirement? No, it is not fulfilling my requirement. Why? Now he is providing the bonus as 50,000 fixed bonus. But along with the 50%, I need to calculate the 20% of the annual salary, right? And then I need to check which one is greater. And if 50,000 is greater, then I will return 50,000. If 20% of the annual salary is greater than 50%, then that amount I need to return. Okay? If you want to do this, you can override this. How I can override this method? Because I am making this method as virtual. As I'm making this method at virtual, as you are a child of mine, you have, I'm giving permission to you. You have the permission, you can override the method. How I'm going to override the method? By using the override modifier. And the signature is going to be same. You just look, whatever public virtual double calculate double salary, same, same thing is here, but instead of virtual, I'm using override here, right? Right, yeah, I can use this. But how I can get this, uh, but, but before, but to calculate this, to implement this logic, first of all, I need to check what is the fixed bonus now. How you will get the fixed bonus? We need to call this method. How I can call this method? Two ways. What are the ways? You can create an instance of employee class and you can call this method. And what is the other way? By using the base keyword. By base calculate bonus, right? And by using this base and calculate bonus, I can call this method in this case, the salary property is not required, right? I'm not implementing the salary, right? So uh, I'm not using the salary. If you want, you can remove it, but I just want to show this method can take the parameter and the same parameter you need to pass here, right? And then it will give me the base bonus. Base bonus means the fixed bonus 50,000. 
then I need to calculate the salary. Salary, whatever salary this employee, I'm calculating its total proportion. After calculating, I'm checking if base bonus, what I'm getting from the uh, from this method is greater than the salary, uh, annual salary 20%. If the bonus is greater than return this, else return this, right? So this is how you can include. Now, if the base bonus is 50,000, it will return. If the 20% of the annual salary is greater than 50%, let assume the 20% of the annual salary is 70,000, then 70,000 will be the bonus for this employee, which designation is a developer. Now, now coming to this manager part, right? This is another class which is also inherited from the employee class. And as for our business logic, whatever written inside the parent class, that is not fulfilling our business requirement. Why? Because I cannot use this 50,000 50, as a fixed bonus because I have the other options also available. What is the other option? 25% of the annual salary can be given to the developers, right? Can be given to the manager. So in this case, not developer, it's going to be manager, which is greater. Right. Suppose we calculate the 20% salary of the manager, which is 2 lakhs. Then what amount you will give to the you will give to that uh, employee, whether you will give 50,000 or 2 lakhs, you need to give 2,000, uh, 2 lakhs, because 2, 000, 2 lakhs is greater than this 50,000. So the same logic, calculate the calculate bonus method of the parent class, which will return you the fixed bonus. Then we need to calculate the bonus based on its salary, right? Salary into 25%. Then we need to check which one is greater. Base bonus is greater or bonus based on the salary is greater. If base bonus is greater, return that. If bonus based on salary is greater, then return that. And for admin, as per our business logic, right? As per our business logic, the admin will get the 50,000 uh, 50, as a fixed bonus. So that logic, what implemented inside the parent class, fulfilling the business requirement. So no need to write or no need to override this method, right? So this is how you can implement overriding in your application now. Now, see, I'm creating one employee. I'm setting the salary as five lakhs, right? Then I'm calling this calculate bonus. So this calculate bonus method will execute, right? Uh, let me go to implementation, right? So what is the developer so developer calculate bonus so developer calculate bonus it will come to here based on the salary you will calculate the bonus and whatever bonus he will return and that bonus what i'm doing i'm just printing in the console and the same for the employee whose designation is manager this is employee designation developer employee designation manager employee designation admin another employee designation developer so you can create as many as employee with different designation different salary and you can implement uh, call this calculate bonus and you will get the bonus and once you get then you can in this right so now i'm going to run this application and show you the output right so once uh, you run the application you will see that some of the employee will get fifty thousand as bonus right that is a fixed bonus right and uh, this is admin admin means he is getting fifty thousand right this is developer his salary is five lakhs so he's going to get bonus of one lakh right one lakh is greater than fifty thousand so you will get another Manager, its salary is 8 lakhs. 8 lakhs means 25% is going to get the bonus at 2 lakhs because 2 lakhs is greater than 50,000. And this is another uh, employee whose designation is developer, but its annual salary is 2, 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs into 20% means 40,000. 40,000 is less than 50,000. So you will get the fixed bonus as 50,000. This is how you need to implement method overriding in your real time application. I hope you understand this now. Now we are going to discuss one of the frequently asked interview question. That is, what is the difference between method overloading and method overriding in C sharp? Right? Let us see the differences. So, what is method overriding? Now, it is an approach to defining a multiple method with the same name but with a different signature. Different signature means the method name is going to be same, but the number, type, and order of parameters are going to be different. And it can be implemented in the same class as well as in the parent and child classes, right? You can say overloading a method can be performed within the same class as well as between the parent and child classes. To overload a parent class method under the child class, the child class doesn't require to take any permission from the parent class, right? This is all about defining multiple behavior to a method. It is used to implement static or compiled and polymorphism. And to implement method overloading, 
no separate keywords are required, right? We can implement in a normal way because overloading methods are a different method, right? They are not the same method. The name might the name is going to be same, but the parameter is going to be different. Now come to overriding concept. What is overriding means? It is an approach to defining multiple methods with the same name and with the same signature. Same signature means what? Now the name and the signature is going to be same. So you can see this is the method name calculate bonus and the signature is this one, right? Taking one parameter here, you also need to define the same thing, same name and same signature, right? Overriding of method is not possible within the same class. It must be performed under the child classes now. Now you can see this is one method. I cannot declare the same method with the same signature in this class, right? I cannot declare like this because overriding is not possible within the same class. Overriding means what now you should have declared the method as virtual in the parent class and inside the child class only you can override the method by using override modifier, right? To override a parent class method under the child class, first the child class requires to take the permission from its parent. See, in this case, if the parent class doesn't declare the method as virtual, then the child class cannot override that method, right? So it is mandatory to declare the method as virtual. See, I remove virtual. As soon as I remove virtual, you can see we are getting some error. That means now parent doesn't give permission to the child class to override this method. And even the child doesn't get permission from the parent and he's trying to override. That's why he's getting the error. Now, if you make this method as virtual, right, then you will see that the error will be gone, right? Now, parent giving permission to the child to override the method. So child needs to take the permission from this is all about changing the behavior of the method. See, in this case, the method signature is same, right? So this is one of the implementation of this method. And this is another implementation of this method, right? That means we are just changing the behavior of the method, right? It is used to implement dynamic polymorphism. Why? Now, because at runtime only, which method is going to be executed that is going to be decided by the CLR. It is not possible to figure out which method is going to be executed by the compiler, right? Because compiler check the type and at runtime, based on the object, right? Based on the object, the reference variable pointing to from that object only, from that object type only, the method is going to be executed, right? And how to implement means we need to use the virtual keyword for the base class function. As you can see, in the base class, we need to declare the method as virtual by using the virtual keyword. And in the child class, we need to use that override modifier to override the method. So this is the difference between method overloading and method overriding. That's it for today. In case you need the text document of this video, right? Whatever I'm showing in the presentation, if you, in case of need, then the same is provided, the link for the same is provided in the video description section. Just go to that link and you will get this document. Thank you. Thank you for watching this.